Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. This is video number 12 and in this one we're going to be looking at limiting agents. So one of the things that we've kind of assumed I guess as we've gone along is that when we put two reactants together and they combine to form a chemical reaction, they combine in the correct ratios for each of them to react completely. So when we write an equation such as magnesium plus hydrochloric acid forms hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride, and we now know that one of the important pieces of information we get from this balanced equation is our mole ratios, one to two to one to one. One of the important assumptions that we've made here is that the reaction has not only gone to completion, but it has also used up all of the chemicals um, that are present on the reactant side. However, this is often not the case. Most of the time, reactants are not present in exactly the right mole ratios in order for them to both react completely to ensure that there is actually none of either or any of the reactants left at the end of the reaction and you only have products. Typically what happens is that one or other of these reactants can be in a higher a quantity than is actually needed for the reaction to, to completely use up the other reactant. So that is, so I guess another way of saying that is that one of our reactants will be used up before the other one. When this happens, we have a couple of terms that are used to describe that kind of a reaction. The first is that the reactant that is completely consumed, that is the one that um, has none of it left at the end of the reaction, is called a limiting agent or limiting reagent because it limits the reaction. That is, once it is used up, the reaction will stop. So it may well be that in the past you've put magnesium into some hydrochloric acid, you've seen all the fizzing and all the hydrogen that's been given off, and then the magnesium disappears. And one of the assumptions that we've made is that the magnesium is completely reacted, which is fair enough, if there's no magnesium left, it probably has. But we may also make the assumption that all of the acid has also reacted because it looked colorless kind of like water to begin with and after it's reacted any of the magnesium that's gone into solution um, doesn't change the color of the solution so again it looks the same afterwards so the assumption that we can often make is that both the magnesium and the acid have completely reacted with one another this is not always the case and if we put in another little piece of magnesium in there and we got more hydrogen being produced then we would know that the magnesium in that case is the limiting reagent. The amount of magnesium is basically defining how much of this reaction we're going to have. So once it's used up that's the end of the reaction. In that um, example that I took, talked about which is magnesium plus acid, whilst the magnesium would be regarded as the limiting agent if we run out of magnesium, if we still have acid left over at the end, we would call it the reagent that is in excess. So for example, if we were doing this reaction with hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid would be the excess reagent. Or um, as I often like to do with uh, one of the famous bands of the 80s, in excess. So it is the compound or the element or the reactant that's in excess. This particular um, notation or nomenclature for describing the components of a reaction helps us to understand whether or not reactions will, once they have gone to completion, use all of our reactants or whether we will have one or more left at the end. Possibly the simplest way to demonstrate this is to use an actual example. So if we had two moles of sodium reacting with three moles of water to form hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide, would we have a limiting reagent? As we've done before, the first thing we need to do is to put the uh, equation down and then balance it. So I've already done this step for you. So two sodiums plus two water molecules produce one 
hydrogen gas molecule and two sodium hydroxides. So the mole ratio here is two to two to one to two. Now we're specifically interested in sodium and water. So reacting is two moles of sodium and three moles of water. Now what we can see from the above is every two moles of sodium only requires two moles of water to react. In this case, we have an excess of water. So the water is in excess. That means the sodium must be the limiting agent. And that is, once this reaction proceeds, all of the sodium will be used up, but we'll still have a little bit of water left over. Practice again to help you um, be comfortable with these sorts of calculations, and thanks for watching.